The latest NHL 19 patch has been stirring up some trouble. That is changing the dynamics of the game and making some strategies a little bit worse than others. I've had some time to play a few games, look back, analyze my strategies a bit so that I can give you guys the best possible strategies that you could use for playing NHL 19. I didn't want to release the video too, too early because you need to experience it for a bit before you start preaching it. So I'm going to be going over each of these strategies in detail, but if you want to know what all the different options are and what they do, check out the link in the description, which is a video that I posted at the beginning of the year that helps you guys understand what each setting does. All right, the first setting, the four check does not change. One, two, two passive. AIs are worse than they were before. They're not going to do anything for you. You want them taking away the passing lanes more than anything. If you decide that you want them to be all up in your opponent's face and go one two two aggressive same idea with the neutral zone strategy we're keeping it at a one four or one three one so that it's harder for your opponent to enter the zone this slider however does change we're going to move it up a few notches the reason for that is your AIs are going back to their zone a little bit too early and when they're standing still like pylons and your opponent has a lot of time and space to get momentum to skate up the ice it's a lot easier for him to get through your guys having this be a little bit closer towards the middle means they'll be a little further up and they won't sprint into formation as soon as the opponent gets the puck offensive pressure does not change you want them to be in better positions to help you out rather than sit back and make sure no one's cherry picking because it's hard enough to get breakaways this year anyway contained puck we're keeping the players between the puck and the net and that is for the purpose of blocking shots it works really well with the defensive strategy of collapsing because we want to eliminate a lot of RNG and make it so that our goalies see as little shots as possible. Protect the net makes them a little bit too passive, but normal and puck side attack could work as well, especially for those opponents that like to cycle the puck and wait for good opportunities. Collapsing is used to keep everyone down low and block shots. We're keeping passive box. It's like collapsing except on the penalty kill. For the power play, we're switching back to overload because the umbrella formation, not that great. I think it was uh, keeping my players a little bit too far on. You got two players in the middle in front of the goalie. I think it's kind of unnecessary. We keep this at zero so our players know that we're going to carry the puck in and they won't try to enter the zone without you and pretty much make it so that you get constant offsides. Control breakout is on strong side slant. This is what happens when you start from behind your net with the puck to try to enter the offensive zone. The reason why we want this is we want all of our players to be skating with us with speed so we can pass it to them at any time so that we can continue with that speed to enter the zone. For power play, same idea as the power play carry dump slider. We want our players to know that we're gonna be carrying the puck in most of the time. But if necessary, you can always pass it. On a power play, you shouldn't have too, too much trouble entering the zone anyway. Because, I mean, there's one less person on the ice, right? It's really defending yourself from shorthanded goals. I think that's more important. Quick breakout is going to be close support. Because we don't want our players to be going off by themselves until we're absolutely sure that we're going to keep the puck and actually break out. Leave zone early causes a lot of nasty turnovers. Ones that often lead to goals against. Last year wasn't the case. This year it seems to be a lot worse. It's much more of a defensive strategy, but if you want a more offensive strategy i'd go with stay wide finally three on three offense without this strategy my players all decide that they want to stand in front of the net so any kind of turnover will automatically be a breakaway for the other team that's why we want it on passive in the forward lines they all stay the same there's only one change that i made though if you're struggling to create offense with behind the net just switch to overload behind the net creates a lot more creativity and gives you a lot more time and space if you have a person behind there to create some plays now that skill zone has been nerfed a little bit it's not as important and overload might work better for most people but i just want to show that i go behind the net carry dump the slider is just for offside purposes we don't want our players to try to go in without us just like in the power play cycle shoot just means that we want our players in positions where they can take good shots if you were like position locked this would make a little bit more sense because your ais will have more of a tendency to pass or shoot so this is the side that changes here we want the efficiency energy slider on the opposite side all the way to the left 
they made the changes to the stamina bar, not even in the last patch, but that's okay, where now your players are going to get a lot more tired, so it's more important that they have energy so that when you use them, it will be a lot easier for you. And that means they won't be chasing around as much. Finally, the don't block block setting, you absolutely want this on block. You want to limit the amount of shots that your goalie sees. Heading into the defensive strategies, these ones are all going to be the same, and they're going to be for all of the lines. This hold the line pinch setting, actually not as important as it was in previous years. It works in tandem with offensive pressure as to how your defense will react in the offensive zone. Because you won't be giving up as much breakaways, maybe you should try to let them be a little bit more aggressive and try to cause some turnovers without giving up any breakaways. I have the slider all the way down, but feel free free to go a little bit higher so that they can help you out the cycle shoot slider i like my defenseman closer to the middle rather than closer to the board so that's why i have that at 10 hopefully these new strategies will allow you guys to play better since the patch i want to mention my old strategies actually weren't that bad i was using them with great success even until now but since the patch i did notice that there were certain areas that started to lack and I think that's where you guys had problems. So I want to really improve on those. Anyways, if you guys have any kind of questions, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to help you out if need be.